Vitamin B6 has been having its time in the spotlight lately. Um, a news channel here in Australia did a bit of a story on it. And that's been getting a lot of people talking about vitamin and supplementation overdoses, which isn't a bad thing to raise awareness of because about half of Australian adults take supplements and you can in fact have too much of vitamins. This story on vitamin B6 overdoses is a big example of that. But today I wanted to just explain this all in a bit more detail because news stories can be a bit extreme, they tend to exaggerate a little, they don't kind of give the whole picture. But yes, vitamin B6 can cause nerve issues if you have too much and in a moment I will let you know why it can do this and also how much vitamin B6 could be considered too much. So let's go. <music> So this is the news story that's kicked off all of this. Um, I will link this in the description because it is worth a watch. But keep in mind, this isn't a new thing. Vitamin B6 has been a vitamin that's been known to cause issues in overdose. And every couple of years, I've noticed we do get a story about it in the news cycle. But I think we should start with what vitamin B6 even is. Now, I haven't done a video on this one yet, and rest assured, it will be coming. But for now, what you need to know is that vitamin B6 is also known as pyridoxine, and it belongs to the larger family of B vitamins. Now, it is a water-soluble vitamin, which you do need to remember because I will be bringing this up a bit later in the video. Like with all vitamins, B6 is important for a number of functions in the body, but its main use is in brain function. So it's actually needed to make neurotransmitters, um, specifically serotonin. If you didn't already know, serotonin regulates your mood and also sleep. And B6 is also needed to make another neurotransmitter, which is dopamine. Dopamine is involved with feelings of motivation, reward, and pleasure. And the third neurotransmitter that it's involved in is making GABA. Now, GABA is involved in calming your nervous system and reducing overall feelings of anxiety. So B6, they're needed for three very important neurotransmitters. And so from this, you may be seeing that getting enough vitamin B6 is going to be important for maintaining a healthy mental state because of all the neurotransmitters that it's linked to. Now, it's not just needed for your brain health. It does have a lot of other important functions. Um, Energy production is one of them. It's also involved in making red blood cells, also breaking down protein from the food that you eat. Uh, it's involved in your immune system and regulating hormones as well. But I'm gonna save all of those and going into more detail on those for a different video because today we are just focusing on um, vitamin B6 overdose or toxicity. So it's a very important vitamin, we've established that, but I do wanna mention that deficiency in vitamin B6 is incredibly rare. And if you are having a well-balanced diet, you'll be getting more than enough vitamin B6. So honestly, in most people, there isn't a need to supplement at all. And that's why if you do take a supplement and it has vitamin B6, you become more at risk of getting an overdose because it's likely that you didn't need it in the first place. So what exactly happens then if you have too much vitamin B6? Well, the main issue is something called peripheral neuropathy. And this is essentially nerve damage, but it affects the nerves outside of your brain and spinal cord, which happen to be your peripheral nerves. These are the nerves that are responsible for feeling things, so your sensation of touch, um, for movement, and the many functions that happen throughout your body. So when these peripheral nerves get damaged, you can get some pretty unpleasant symptoms like tingling in your hands and feet. You may also experience numbness. Um, that can turn into pain and also leads to muscle weakness. And in the end, you'll find that all of these together impact on your ability to do your day-to-day -day activities because of how important these nerves end up being for movement. So why then does having too much B6 cause these nerve issues? Well, it's probably due to a number of reasons, but when you consume vitamin B6 from your food, your body will need to convert it to the active form of B6. And this is called pyridoxal 5-phosphate 
or as I like to just refer to it, PLP. So when you have too much B6 coming in from food or more realistically coming in from supplements, then your body makes too much of this PLP, which seems to go on and damage your nerve cells. So usually if you have the right amount of PLP in your system, it ends up binding to enzymes and it does what it then needs to do. But if you have too much PLP, all of the enzymes that it would usually attach to, they get oversaturated, there's none left. And so it ends up hanging around in your system. And if it has too much free time, I guess, that's when it starts causing damage. There are also some studies that seem to suggest that too much of this PLP can go on to damage the myelin sheath of nerve cells. This is a protective covering over your nerves that actually helps your nerves send messages to each other faster. So if you damage this covering, you disrupt nerve function as well. So this is a good example of something being clearly very good for you if you have the right amount of it. But if there is too much, it starts going to places it shouldn't and then it starts to cause damage. So like with all things, a recurring message in my videos, balance is key. And so the important thing that everyone would want to know then is how much B6 do we need every day? As usual, I always look to the nutrient reference values for Australia and New Zealand. It's appearing on the screen now, but the link to this page is going to be in the description. As we can see here, adults need about 1.3 milligrams a day. And that goes up a very small amount once you get over 50 years old. Uh, with men needing about 1.7 milligrams a day and women over 50 they need 1.5 milligrams a day this tends to be because as you get older you absorb less of the vitamin from the foods that you eat there is also some evidence that suggests having more b6 in these older years can help maintain cognitive function as you can see overall though it's not actually a lot of B6 that you need to get in order to hit your daily requirements. And like I said, people will reach this quite easily from the food that they eat. And so the important number that I would like everyone to pay attention to is the upper level of intake. This is the maximum amount of vitamin B6 that you should have each day because over this amount, you then run the risk of toxicity. So for adults, it is about 50 milligrams per day. And actually, if you look at typical vitamin B6 supplements, they have between 50 to 100 milligrams of vitamin B6, which is already more than these guidelines are suggesting that you take. I'll be honest, I don't see many people taking a purely vitamin B6 supplement. And I think you would only need to take that if you have a real clinical need and it was something that was recommended by your doctor. It's not a supplement that I would just be grabbing because you're thinking, oh, this can help those doses can in fact be a bit higher than what you need. So what seems to be the case is that most people are accidentally having too much B6. And this is because many supplements for other nutrients can also contain some vitamin B6 and energy drinks also tend to have some vitamin B6. So people are likely unaware that they are taking this extra vitamin B6. And this is exactly what happened to the person in the news story that I showed in the beginning of the video. Um, she was taking a magnesium supplement and that also happened to have vitamin B6. And I've noticed that anything that markets itself as energy boosting will include vitamin B6 along with some other B vitamins. So why is this? It's because the main role of B vitamins and what they're known for is energy production. And so products tend to just include them to essentially cover their bases and make the product seem more effective. They can market it more for energy production. And so I just want to go through some examples of some supplements that you may not know also have vitamin B6. So this is a very popular magnesium supplement here in Australia. It's the Ultra Muscle Ease Energy. This is what I meant when I said magnesium and energy supplement. So if you look at this ingredient list, first of all, it's massive. And it has about 60 milligrams of vitamin B6, which is more than what the recommended upper limit per day is. But if you look at the other Ultra Muscle Ease product that doesn't have energy in the name, so this is supposed to be just for muscle health, it also has about 50 milligrams of vitamin B6. So please, when you are getting supplements, look at the ingredient list and always make sure that you are only getting what you need. And that goes for general multivitamins as well. They will contain vitamin B6 too. It's not just supplements, it is also energy drinks. So if we look at Red Bull, we see that there's about five milligrams in a serve. 
which is not as much as what these supplements are getting. But some people take supplements and energy drinks as well. So you can see how it might not be too hard to get too much vitamin B6. It is pretty standard for all energy drinks to have a small amount of vitamin B6 because, like I said, it's also involved in energy production. So next time you have one, just check out the nutritional information panel. Make sure you do know what you are consuming, especially if you are taking a supplement as well. So this entire thing is just a reminder that you should only be taking supplements if you need them, because as I've said, you can in fact have too much of certain nutrients and they can cause harm. Vitamins and minerals aren't just automatically good for you. So if you need a supplement for magnesium, I would just say take a magnesium supplement on its own. The less ingredients, the better in, in my opinion. Don't go for products that just have everything under the sun in it. It's not better for you just because the ingredient list is longer. If you need calcium, just take calcium. And if you are someone that takes energy drinks and supplements, just take stock of what you are consuming and make sure that you aren't having too much vitamin B6. Now, I did say earlier that vitamin B6 was a water-soluble vitamin. And the reason this is important is because with water-soluble vitamins, when you have more than what you need, you do get rid of them in your urine. You essentially pee them out. So many people think that you can have more than you need with no harm because in the end it just leaves your body and with vitamin B6 that is correct. Any excess that you have, if you have more than what your body needs, it will leave your body in your urine. But the damage actually gets done before that. When you have too much active vitamin B6, that's when it causes its damage. It's, it's before it gets cleared and so if you keep having too much vitamin B6, yes, it's water soluble, you will pee it out. But over time, the small amounts of damage to nerves builds up and that's when you can get the peripheral neuropathy. And if you have kidney issues, you are even more at risk because you can't filter and remove the extra vitamin B6 as efficiently. And this is why older adults in particular need to be very careful with the supplements that they take. I know that there are many people, I see this through work, in their older years, they take a multivitamin or they take different supplements and for good reason because their bodies don't absorb nutrients as well as it used to so they may get recommended this. But on the flip side, your body also doesn't get rid of any extra as well as it used to. Kidney function reduces as you age, that's fairly normal. And so having too much B6 is more of a risk in this case because you can't clear it out as well meaning more of it can actually hang around in your system for longer for it to cause that nerve damage. So there you go. I hope you have a better understanding now of why vitamin B6 is for one being talked about so much at the moment, but now you also know how it can cause nerve problems if you have too much of the vitamin. If you have anything that you want explained further that I've mentioned in this video, please let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, Keep playing the long game.